Hello there and welcome to Fairyland Cottage and thanks very much for joining me here today for the third video of 2021. I thought we could continue the cleaning spree. It is January, it is a great time to get moving and there's nothing better than giving the kitchen a deep clean. So what I like to do at the very, very beginning is to clean up the kitchen. But I just find it gives me a little clean slate to work on. And I'm gonna give some eco, sustainable and cleaning tips throughout the video. So I really hope this inspires you to, you can even do it as you're watching this video as well. Just to really, this is the place where we cook our food and I'm always kind of cleaning up as I go along. So this is really taking everything out, giving myself the time. If you've got kids, ask them to help you. Just really, it's great feeling afterwards when it's all done. So I'm just washing up all the dishes and we don't have a dishwasher. So I'm able to get washing up liquid now. I get it refilled from a local health store. And I just use the wooden scrubber with the natural bristles and then a wire scrubber if needed. So I'd love to know how you're getting on. I got so many messages from the last video of everybody really doing deep cleaning around the house and there's some wonderful rituals that you're sharing. So I really got a lot of valuable information that I hadn't heard of before as well. So that was really, really nice. So the first thing I do is basically take everything out of the kitchen. I don't take everything out of the cupboards at one go. I just take everything off the countertops. I'm always guilty of when I'm cleaning the kitchen, just cleaning around everything. Let me know if you're one of those people. Hats off to you if you're somebody that always takes everything off and cleans underneath. So this is just really giving the kitchen some tender loving care. And our kitchen, you can see, is really tiny. So there's not a lot of storage in the place. So it really does well when it is not much stuff on the countertop. So I try and just keep the absolute essential stuff that we're using all the time. And you saw in the last video where I was cleaning where the plants were and where the storage jars are. So I'm just gonna leave them for today. And I'm going to start with our little pantry cupboard, I suppose you could call it. And one little tip I have just to keep things a little bit cleaner is to use old calendars as a little covering underneath all the food. And my cleaning spray, same as always, I'll link below. It's the vinegar and water. And then I'll always steep the pine needles. I just prefer that one over the orange rinds. And I'm just laying the calendar from last year then down again. And I just change them up each year. And we try and not have anything in our cupboards that we don't, number one, know what it is or actually use. So I very rarely buy things that are small little condiments where I'm only going to use it once and then never again. So there's rarely anything actually going off in the cupboards and it's just a way of saving up on food waste. And the top basket, I just have all my medicinal products and herbs, vitamins and minerals. And these cupboards, if you saw a video years ago, I painted them from scratch sanding and then painting them and then putting the top coat and they have lasted incredibly. So it's really worth doing from scratch. It's a super frugal way of kind of just jazzing up your kitchen. Another tip I have is using some baking soda. You've heard it before. I just sprinkle it on, especially where pots are. It just seems to be a little bit extra grease. 
and baking soda is great at just pulling it off. And then I'll clean with the vinegar water. And then we'll always have these plastic little tubawares. I'll collect them either from friends or family. And I'll use them to store food in the fridge. So I do my best not to really throw anything out. There's always another use for everything. And one of the places that I always forget is cleaning on top of the kitchen cupboards. Next is where we keep all the cups and the glasses and the takeaway cups. Again, really, really tiny. So I'm always trying to declutter what I don't need and I very rarely buy anything new. And we are definitely not minimal, but we don't hoard things and we seem to just have what we need. So I'll keep kind of four cups, four glasses if we're having someone over. But I definitely have had to become more resourceful since having a much smaller kitchen and just really avoiding overbuying. At the moment, we've got a lot of restrictions, a lot of shops are closed. So it's much easier for me to buy in large quantities the spices. And what you can do is you can go to an Asian supermarket and buy incredibly large bags of the spices and they'll last a really long time. So I'll do that usually around this time of year, but I still have some left over from last year. Another little tip is those spray bottles. I'll just refill that again with olive oil or whatever I need. I find that a lot of buying in supermarkets, the oil, if you can't buy package free, they always come up those plastic lids. So they're not as easy to recycle. And if you're like me and have a toaster and you have outside and you have birds, I'll always just shake out the toaster so that the birdies can eat. Next is on to the cooker. Now, I don't know whether, it depends what type of cooker you have, but we have kind of like a double layer of glass. So you need to actually take it apart. And another tip is just to use baking soda and lemon juice. There's extremely harsh chemicals in those oven cleaners. So this is not going to affect anybody in the house. You're not breathing in anything that is not savory. and more vinegar and water for the glass. And the lemon and the baking soda together just lift up all the grease. And I remember decades ago, I used to buy those oven cleaners. I'd spray them all in, they'd foam up and I'd just wipe it clean. Baking soda and lemon does the exact same without all the harsh chemicals. And this is a really old oven and a hob, and yet it really comes up clean. Next things are the draining boards. I'm always forgetting about them. And then the baking soda again comes in handy. What I do is I'll buy baking soda in huge quantities in a local cash and carry, and it will last me over a year. So baking soda and then a huge bottle of vinegar is what I will use mostly in the kitchen. 
and already it's starting to feel a lot cleaner and of course look a lot cleaner. And there's a wonderful feeling of just bringing everything back into a crystal clean kitchen. So that's all the countertops done and the top cupboards done. And you might be able to notice that our kitchen is not actually level. So this is a 300 year old house. So I have to get used to things being a little bit higgly piggledy. So we have a little windowsill. It's a tiny little sash window and I use it a lot of times for all the little plants you can see. So just taking everything down and cleaning the windows. That's a little Chinese money plant, an oxillus. And now it's under the sink. This is where we keep our recycling and any bottles that we're able to get refilled and laundry detergent. So keep it really simple. And it is definitely not the nicest of jobs to do, but it just has to be done and it definitely feels a lot better when it is. Now the only downside to having a little open plan in the kitchen is it does get an incredible amount of dust and dirt. So I wouldn't be a big fan of open storage, but these little dividers here for the plates is really handy. And you saw I did the right side of this at last week's video. And the food processor there with the blender comes together. That's our main appliance that we use in the kitchen. That and the toaster and the kettle. Next is the drawers. They're tiny little drawers. I try and limit the amount of cutlery that we have. And I'll buy stainless steel and wooden as much as I can. And it may seem tedious, taking everything out, cleaning it down, putting it all back. But again, it's like you're cleaning every inch of the kitchen. It's definitely worthwhile. I'll have the wax wraps in here. We'll get things like plastic bags. I don't want to throw them out, so I'll keep them and reuse them. And we get given things like sandwich bags or tin foil or cling film. I'll keep them all and reuse them again and again. And then last but not least is the fridge. This is my least favorite job after under the sink. <laughs> Everything has to come out. 
and just give all the shelves a really good clean. These are the acorns that I keep and I will plant in springtime. Some of them even sprouted before I put them in. So like before, it's really like me giving thanks to the kitchen for cooking so much wonderful food, so much nourishment. It's real just a sign of gratitude I find to give the kitchen a nice deep clean. And I think that fridge looks brand new. And then what I do is I use the plastic boxes I will use to put some food in and then I'll still get things like Oatly which is for my husband's coffee and little yogurt cartons that I can reuse the cartons when I'm planting seeds. So I always do my best to be mindful from the point of view of saving as much waste as I possibly can. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has inspired you to really deep clean your kitchen. Give thanks. And then I just finished off with my favorite essential oil and I got this beautiful burner at Christmas time. So thanks very much for watching. Let's chat below all things cleaning and sustainable. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week.